I had a study in which we had selected men in four cities in the United States. And it turned out that men who were living in an agricultural area where there's a lot of spraying had half as many moving sperm as men in Minneapolis. That's huge, right? Half as many moving sperm. And they weren't actually farmers. They were just living in Columbia, Missouri, in this environment where this stuff can get in the water and the air and so on. And, and they were bad off, you know, in terms of just sperm, right? Um, and then we actually went one step farther and we looked in their urine for these pesticide metabolites. And sure enough, more pesticides, poorer semen quality. And so I've been tracking that ever since. And when we looked at the decline from the beginning of our study period, which is back to 1973, the decline was, like I said, one about 1% 1 per year. When we looked since 2000, the decline was more than 2% per year. Every time we look at this, it gets worse. And this is kind of scary because our exposures that I feel are driving this to a large extent are not getting less. In fact, if anything, they're probably increasing. And we're having drops in fertility worldwide, which are really dramatic. Also about 1% per year and probably now increasing. Okay, so this kind of makes me think about doomsday predictions. What is the forecast of the future? Are we looking at going to zero sperm count? I would say that's a good question and no. The thing that we plot is an average. And if you think of any average, like average weight and average height, they're bell-shaped. Everyone knows that, I think. There's a bell shape. And what we report is the center of that bell, the middle, the median the average. And so if you think about that bell, if that average was at zero for anything, whether it was height or weight or sperm count, that would mean that some of the numbers would be negative and some would be positive. But you can't have negative weight or height, and you can't have negative sperm count. So in fact, the distribution of sperm count is not bell-shaped, okay? It's actually very, what we call skewed. It has a big hump and then it tapers off with a long tail. You see what I mean? I see. So, okay. so what, if, if the hump is the highest point, the median were at zero, then you'd have a lot of, half the men would have negative sperm count. It's not possible. We can come closer and closer to zero for that mean or median, but um, we can't reach it. So that's one thing about zero. Don't look for zero, we won't see zero, but we will see and are seeing more and more men going into the area of subfertility. We can talk about fertility and subfertility, but so there was a paper a long time ago that was very, very good and no, never been improved upon as far as I know, where what they did was they took couples who were trying to get pregnant for the first time, not using contraceptives, and they got the men's sperm count, and then they saw how long it took them to get pregnant. That's called time to pregnancy. That's a variable you can find out. You know, how long were you trying? That's the time to pregnancy. It turns out that the, obviously, the higher the sperm count, the shorter the time to pregnancy, right? And, but what they found was that when you get not all that low, if you get below, uh, if, if, as you get closer, below 50 and closer and closer towards zero, of course, zero, you can't, time to pregnancy is infinite. You can't get pregnant. <laughs> so what they reported was the number of, the probability of getting pregnant in any one month, okay? And it turned out that when you got below a sperm count below around 45, it's not precise because it gradually falls off. It gets the, you know, the, the time it takes to get pregnant or the probability of conceiving in any one month goes down to zero. It's just going to take people longer and longer and longer to conceive. And we're already at the, we were at 47, well below that now, I can't remember where we are now, but we're definitely in the subfertile range for the average man in our studies. When we're looking at that bell curve, 
what are the commonalities of the men that are on the lower part of that bell curve that are have super low subfertility? Is there anything linking that cohort together? Oh, it's so it's so varied. There there can be lifestyle factors that put you down there. Your couch potato, you smoke a lot, you drink a lot, you're going to be much more likely to be down there. It's probabilities, right? You could have physical problems. You could have something called a varicocele or blockages or things that physically get in the way of the sperm being produced or getting out. And you can have exposures that you're not aware of, which is like the chemicals in plastics and, 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 and so on. So the only way I can answer that is, is with a study. And, and you know, we, we have studied a number of factors, but pesticides, I told you, you know, if, if the man is, is exposed to these pesticides, which were mostly the triazine, so atrazine and other similar chemicals, they're going to have, be much more likely to be in the lower part of that curve. Yeah. Now, when you go to other things that you can learn about a sperm, like does it have two heads? Some do. Does it have two tails? Some do. Is it round instead of oval? Yes. Those are things that can happen. That's called shape or morphology, right? And any sperm sample, you know, there, there's an evaluation of the percent of sperm that are normally shaped. And actually, that's pretty low. It's like average about 12, you know, 12%. I mean, it's not, it's not a lot. And the third thing you could look at is, are they swimming? Are they moving? They're not moving. They're not going to deliver the goods, right? <laughs> and how are they swimming? Well, if they just swim around in circles, that's not going to get you anywhere. So the motility, as it's called, that's also given a number. And it turns out that all of those things, the count, the morphology, the motility, have to be of certain quality to result in a pregnancy. Those things tend to be correlated. So I, I would suspect that they've also declined, but I don't know because we can't study it. Well, it seems like there's just so many different factors at play here. And just to even conduct one of these studies, there's so many hurdles to get over. It's amazing that you pulled it off because there's a stigma around even giving a sample. You know, I don't yeah. I think I haven't given a sample and I don't think I really even know a single one of my friends. I don't even ask them, but there is a stigma around every guy thinks that their sperm's perfect. You know, they're not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and my recommendation to every guy who has never given a semen sample is that you should do it. And the reason is that First of all, you might not ever want to get pregnant, but but who knows, okay? So it'd be good, good to know ahead of time if you're reasonably okay, right? But also, if you're not, then you can think about what, why not? And are there things that can be done? There's treatments and, you know, maybe there's a problem and it needs to be fixed. And you might learn something about your life expectancy. <laughs> you know, I mean, so I I just think it's, just like you get your cholesterol checked and you get your blood pressure checked, why wouldn't you get your sperm count checked? Well, I think I actually may know the answer to that. There's that um, psychological experiment called, uh, I think it's called Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. Where you have a, a box with a cat in it and there's poison in the box. And as long as you don't open the box, the cat is both alive and dead. Right. So it's like, you don't want to open that box because once you see the cat's dead, you've kind of killed the cat. Right. Long but this is different. Play. This is different because in this situation, there might be something you can do about it. The cat might be just sick. You could help it along, right? So um, I, I highly recommend that. <laughs>